welcome to church. I just want to invite you to sing this song with us and make it the prayer, the cry of your heart today. I believe in the blood of Jesus. The wash is white as snow. I believe that the power of the gospel still makes the broken whole. I believe that the curse of sin was broken when they rolled away that stone. I believe, I believe, I believe. Do you believe that today? As I bow before you, Lord, I will rise in confidence. I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. No matter where I go, no matter where I be, I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. Oh, yeah. I believe that the world when we fall out on our knees, I believe that the rain will go walk and the blind are gonna see. I believe that the gates of hell will crumble when the church begins to sing. I believe, I believe, I believe. just one more time. I know it's easy to say the words, I will rise in confidence. I will see your goodness. But today I want to invite you to just increase your faith a little bit. I pray that God would increase our faith to be like David in Psalm 27, where he says he believes he will look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So whatever darkness you may find yourself in today, let's just sing this as a declaration of faith that we will see his goodness. As I bow before you, Lord, I will rise in confidence. I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. No matter where I go, no matter where I've been, I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land.
Lord, we declare that this morning. Today, Lord, we believe we will see your goodness. Lord, would you lead us to see more of you, to know more of you, to have faith to step in everything you have for us, Lord. We believe and we step out in faith.
Oh, call these bones to me And call these lungs to sing once again I will praise, oh, Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence me Welcome you to Highlands Online today, wherever you're watching from, if you're watching on YouTube or YouTube. Facebook, our online campus, television. Yeah. Uh, we said outer space last week. We didn't get any tweets from Jeff I, Bezos. I asked in the chat if anybody was watching from space. <sighs> nobody said no. One day. One day they will. Hey, nobody we are. Said no. <laughs> nobody, nobody said no. <laughs> 
I don't know. Maybe it's still transmitting. I don't know, speed of light, something mm. like that. Anyways, hey, we are so glad that you are with us today. If we haven't met before, my name is James. I'm our messaging director. This is Tim. Tim's our digital pastor. And speaking of digital pastor things, why don't you give an update on our 90 day through the New Testament stuff? 90 days. Yeah, last week we celebrated 30 days. And so that means we're a third of the way there. And so I hear story after story about how people are reading this with their families and how they're just enjoying spending time with God every single day. Um, and the, the way we're doing it through the chronological plan is just mm -hmm. awesome and people really have enjoyed reading it that way. Uh, so just keep it up guys, like you're doing awesome. Don't give up, if you're behind, it's okay. Just start where you're at and let's do this together. Let's continue engaging in God's word because that is what's gonna change us, right? That's right. You know, I, I've never done a chronological read before, um, but I love reading those stories, the same account in different gospels and getting a different flair or a different piece of information and reading them all together, it's really helpful. Again, if you uh, maybe slacked off, it's okay. Uh, just hop back on, keep reading with us. And you know what, you can go back in time and read. And if you're logged into your account online, you can see what you've completed, which is just so cool. It's awesome. Um, it's really cool. So, hey, please keep keep doing that with us. And if you have any questions, if you want to sign up for that, or if you want to participate with us in generosity, you know where to go. It's the hub. hf.church slash hub is a great place to get resources. Also, right. if you're watching on TV and you want to connect with us, we would love to connect with you. We hear from people all the time, but I want to hear from more people who are engaging with us through television. Go to the Hub and click on that About You section and just let us know if you have a prayer request today, if there's something that you need, if you need uh, material or you want to engage with us or whatever that looks like. We would love to engage with you. That's how we can serve you best is if we know you're watching and know you're engaging. Uh, and if you're watching on our online campus or you're watching on Facebook, jump in the chat and say hi and uh, let me know what your favorite color is. What's your favorite color, Tim? Orange. It's not Ooh. because I'm a UT fan. I just have always liked okay, orange. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I do live in Tennessee, but I don't care about sports. I would say probably blue. Blue. Especially judging from my outfit, that's fitting. All right, what's your favorite uh, color? <laughs> hey, let, let us know, know what chat. your favorite color is. We're really excited about Pastor Allen being back today. And we had Pastor Craig a few weeks ago, Pastor Mark last week, great message, kicking off our Storyteller series. And Pastor Allen will be with us today in week two of that. It's going to be a really, really great message, and you're in for a treat. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, today is a challenging message yeah. for those of us who are trying to follow Jesus I try. Um, about controlling your tongue and your words. And so let, let's dive into it's this. It's going to be good. Yep. Hey, thank you for joining us today. Let's jump into the message. In a time when everyone is leaving their faith, you don't have a choice but to hold on to yours. Why? Because where are you going to go? Who else is able to save? Who else is able to deliver? Who else is able to comfort you when you're hurt? Who else has the words of eternal life? Well, hey everybody, man, it's good to be with you today. I am so excited to share with you that God is doing just incredible things in our church. So with our teaching team, we had Pastor Craig and Pastor Mark last weekend. Hey, catch this, guys. We had 13 people give their life to Jesus last week. That's incredible, isn't it? Those guys did an incredible job. This coming week, so I can be at our Bluefield location, Pastor Steve Robinson is going to bring the message, and we're in a series called Storyteller. And uh, I felt like Pastor Mark just did an awesome job kicking that series off today. Uh, we did this because we're looking at stories from the New Testament. And so many of you, you know, you're reading through the New Testament. Now we're over a third of the way there. It's been awesome. Thank you for all your emails, your encouragement. Man, it's just been so cool to see how God is using His Word to help all of us get to know him better. That's really what it's all about, right? So uh, I'm excited for you, and uh, in case you are behind, just get back in. I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit later in the message, but we are reading the New Testament in 90 days, and uh, it's just been totally amazing for so many of you, and uh, I'm excited for you, okay? So today I wanna look at a story uh, from the Gospel of Luke. Now, what I've learned from your emails is a lot of you are 
new to faith. And obviously last week, 13 brand new believers, right? So Luke is one of the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that start out the New Testament. Those are the four gospel accounts of the story from eyewitness accounts of Jesus. So as we go through the New Testament, I want to help you understand it more. And today I want to sort of focus in on Luke's ministry and how these gospel writers had a certain audience they were all writing to, right? So Matthew, uh, he writes to the Jewish audience. It's the reason he starts in his book with the lineage of Jesus. And then Mark writes for the Gentiles. John, for all of you new believers, I would encourage you to start in the Gospel of John because John writes his book with you in mind. He writes it with all of us who are new to the faith in knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Now, the neat thing about Luke is he actually writes his book for a friend. I love that, don't you? And we get to benefit from it. But actually, Luke had one individual in mind when he writes the account, the book of Luke, and also Acts. And uh, it's just so neat. This guy's name, we don't know a lot about him, but this guy's name was Theophilus. And as you know, Luke was a doctor, so he could have been a, a physician, but it seemed like Theophilus had a mind that was more the engineering side. He was a little more skeptical. He had lots of questions. And so Luke's account of the ministry and the life of Jesus tries to really help Theophilus understand who Jesus is. Notice what Luke says. He says, Theophilus, I have taken the time to put together a well-ordered account. Uh, in other words, I've been very thoughtful about it. Uh, I've done my research, my homework here. So Theophilus, that you might have confidence in what I've written about Jesus in order to settle your spirit. Because it's really, really clear that Theophilus was one of these guys who had an unsettled spirit. He had questions that he didn't have answers to. And here's why I think that's important in our culture today. Because we're in a year, we've just you know, come through a couple of years of pandemic, and as we start out 2022, we may need our own hearts settled. Uh, we may have questions we need to be answered as well. So today's message, I pray, will really be an encouragement to you. We're going to go to Luke chapter 6, and uh, in Luke 6, there is a message that Jesus preaches, and he tells the story here, and it gets real practical. Okay, so let me just warn you, I want you to buckle up a little bit. He wants to strengthen your spirit, but Jesus, he's going to get all up in your business today, Okay. Jesus is going to get really relevant, uh, super practical in an area of our lives that for me, and I probably for you, is super, super convicting. So here's what I want you to consider with me today. Uh, think about this. What if the words that we said to other people in a thoughtless moment, a careless moment, maybe even an angry moment, what if those words that we say got permanently tattooed on their skin so that you could see them every time you ran across them. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but just what if? What if everything you said to other people actually got tattooed on their skin for their life for you to see every time you came across them and for everybody else to see? Uh, let me just ask you, would that cause you to stop for a moment and give some more thought to what you're saying? I, I would hope so. Because all of us have had these moments in our lives where words have escaped our mouths and it was just thoughtless, maybe it was impulsive, extremely careless. They were hurtful, hateful, maybe mean-spirited. And I would imagine that you've had words spoken to you that have impacted you in that same kind of way. I mean, they impacted the way you saw yourself. They impacted your self-image. Because, you see, words are really, really powerful. Uh, that's why the Bible says things like this. Look back in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. Catch this verse, what it says. The words of the reckless pierce like swords. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. And there are going to be those moments where all of us will say things that maybe we didn't fully mean in the moment. 
We just said it out of passion, or maybe we were frustrated and we let it go, you know. We didn't intend for it to have the kind of effect that it had on others, but it did. And there are going to be those times when we actually meant every word of it, right? I mean, we've gotten our um, anger up, and we say things, and we know it's really not going to be the things we should say, but we know full well the impact of our words in the lives of other people, and we go ahead and we say them anyway. Well, here's the thing. Once we let those words fly, <laughs> we don't ever get them back, right? I mean, we can't tell the person, oh, you know, I never said that. No, we can say we're sorry. You know, we can, we can actually apologize, but we, we can't ever get those words back. I mean, we just can't. Once they go, we can't get a do-over. And uh, like a bad tattoo, these words aren't ever going to go away. Hopefully, we can ask for forgiveness, we can apologize, but those words stick in our minds. A little research on the message today before I get into the story of Jesus. Did you know that we speak 16,000 words every day? 16,000 words a day. Uh, the average lifespan of a human being on planet Earth, actually we speak 525,600,000 words in our lifetime. It's actually equal, those who have researched this out, uh, that we uh, every day are writing a 60-page book with the words we say. Now, let me ask you, uh, I bet if you were to actually write a 60-page book that you probably would take the time to have that book edited. You'd want that book spell-checked. You would want to be thoughtful about the sentences you're putting together in your book. Uh, you would want to be sure those sentences were complete. Uh, you would want those sentences to be thoughtful and grammar correctly, and you would have thought what you're putting in a 60-page book. So with that many words being spoken, you know, think about this, 16,000 every day, uh, there's going to be some slip-ups, right? I mean, they're just, there's going to be some slip-ups. Have you ever said something uh, so mean-spirited and cruel that it even surprised you as it, you know, came out of your mouth? And immediately you caught yourself and you were like, no, wait a second. I, I didn't mean that. I, I'm really sorry. I, I don't even know where that came from. And yet one of the hardest lessons when it comes to the words we speak is that we just can't get them back. You know, when they're out there, I can remember saying things. I want to, you know, they're already out there and I want to try to catch them and force them back in. Uh, it reminds me of when I was in Africa one time and, you know, I'd only taken one tube of toothpaste and somehow on the flight over, my toothpaste got squished. And, I, you know, here I am, I'm going to be there for three weeks. So I've got one tube of toothpaste. And it's all in this little plastic bag. And I remember trying, have you ever tried to put toothpaste back in a tube? You can't, can you? I mean, it's just messy. It's impossible. And finally, you just have to clean it up the best you can. I've said some things in my life, and I know many of you can relate to me, to people who I know and who I love that I immediately regretted. And sometimes things I've said, actually, I was embarrassed by those things. So I've learned over time, as I've gotten older, that whatever I say actually comes from a deeper place. And that's true for you as well. And this is what Jesus is getting at in the story. The passage today I want to look at, Luke chapter 6, it's only three verses. But let's look in verse 43. And he packs a ton into these verses. This is what he says. He says, a good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes. Grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury, catch this, of a good heart. Now, it's Valentine's Day. I want to talk to you about your heart, right? Valentine's weekend. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. And he says, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. So catch what he sums up here. He says, what you say flows from what is in your heart. So I want you to catch this. This may be transformative for some of you. So our heart is the source of our words, not our mind, 
You know, we, we think it's in our mind, but it's really our heart. And what you say will actually reveal what's in your heart every single time. So I want you to have a great Valentine's Day weekend. So trust me here, uh, say the right things, you know, get that evil stuff out. You'll have a much, much better Valentine weekend with those you love. Now, I don't know about you, but it really frustrates me that something so small as my tongue can have so much influence and so much impact on my life in all my relationships. You ever thought about this? Did you know that your tongue only weighs about 70 grams? Uh, think about that. Uh, matter of fact, um, science tells us that 70% of our tongue is actually water weight. 70%. Uh, only about 20% is called soft muscle, and 10% is nothing but fat. Okay? I mean, that, that's what our tongue is made up of. It's really a weird combination of muscles. Uh, did you notice that your tongue, uh, my tongue, it never gets tired, uh, it never gets sore? Did you notice that? I mean, uh, I can talk for hours today. <laughs> I, I do that every Sunday. But I don't ever have to warm up my tongue. You know, I, I wouldn't backstage before I came out or this morning on my way to church. I, I wasn't doing tongue stretches today. <laughs> When I used to run, that's been a long time ago, jog, I never really ran, uh, I would have to, you know, warm up, stretch out my hammy so I wouldn't pull something. I, I gave that up, but I don't, have, I don't ever have to do that with my tongue, you know. I, I've never had to put some kind of ointment on my tongue because the muscle got so sore, I'll wag that thing all day long, and it seems to recover really well. And I know from experience that I need to pay much more attention to this small little muscle in my body than any other muscle, because even though it's small, Jesus says, and James's half-brother said, it's the most powerful muscle in our entire body, more powerful than our big biceps, or you know, some of you have big biceps, or whatever. The tongue is small, but dude, it's powerful. James, uh, he says a lot, about your tongue over in his book that we'll eventually get to in our reading. This is what James says in chapter 3, verse 8. No one can tame the tongue. Uh, you're like, uh, I think I can. <laughs> no, you can't. Nobody can fully tame what comes out of your mouth. So James is challenging us to go deeper. And Jesus here in Luke is challenging us to go deeper. He says, listen. If you want control of your tongue, the only way to do that is you've got to submit your heart. That's the only way to get control of your tongue. You see, many of us, what happens maybe on the day of our conversion, when we actually got saved and we gave our life to Jesus Christ, uh, honestly, what happens is our questions have been answered and, and we sort of, on that conversion day, on that salvation day, we sort of give our heads to Jesus, right? Uh, we had some questions. Uh, we were able to get through those questions. We got our answers. We reasoned it through. And we came to a point where it just made sense to us to give our life to Jesus. And we prayed a prayer. And hopefully we follow that up to where we got publicly baptized. And that's how Jesus sort of starts. He starts with our head. But I want you to understand something. What he's really after, he's really after your heart. Because that's the core of who you are. And in most of our spiritual journeys, you know, we get saved from our mindset, from our head, and then in our salvation, that's true, you know, we're saved by his blood, but then as we understand salvation, it becomes a heart thing. You know, how do you know if you've fully given Jesus your heart? How do you know that? Well, Jesus actually says two big things in all of his teaching in the New Testament that are indicators of whether or not he has our hearts or not. And um, the first thing that Jesus would say, and, and uh, this is not a message about this at all, but first thing he says is, uh, look at your finances. If you want to know where your heart is, look at your finances. Look at your checkbook. Our finances, according to Jesus, will reveal where our heart is every time. In fact, Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 21, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. So he says, the desires of your heart always follow your treasure. 
And the reason why Jesus talks about money so much is because he knows our hearts follow it, right? And if you send your treasure to where you want your heart to be, then your heart will follow it. It's never in reverse, never. And he talks about over and over and over. Huh. You know, the second indicator, if you submitted your heart fully and he has control of your heart, it's our tongue, our tongues, it's your speech. That's what he says. For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Now, uh, I don't want you to misunderstand this because our situation and our salvation in Jesus Christ is not dependent on the words we speak. So don't, I don't want to confuse you there, thankfully, right? Otherwise, we'd all be in trouble. However, uh, just because we're saved by grace through faith, I can't say well, I'm going to give that person an earful, you know. I've already saved. I'm already, my name's already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm not perfect, and I'm going to make mistakes every now and then until I get to heaven. So I tell you what, they've ticked me off. I'm going to give that person an earful. No, no, that, that, that's not what Jesus is saying here at all. He says, hey, that reveals the condition of your heart. And the condition of our heart is often revealed with our tone of speech. That's why he uses the analogy here in Luke 6 of a fig tree. He says, a healthy fruit tree is going to produce healthy fruit, but an unhealthy tree is going to produce unhealthy fruit. It all springs up from the condition of our hearts. Our words spill out from our hearts. And Jesus is saying, hey, listen, those words that surprised you when you said them, that you know you shouldn't have, uh, well, I'm going to tell you something. They've been marinating in your heart for a while. They've been down there. Those words that you said that sort of took you by surprise, like a seed that's been in the soil of your heart, and it's been growing there for a while, and it finally took root, and it blossomed, and all of a sudden, boom, you know, it came out through the surface of your tongue. Because the mouth can only speak what the heart is full of. It's controlled by here. I mean, we, we got to pay attention to our inputs then, right? I mean, this, this is so important what we're putting in. What is it that we're taking in with our eyes and our ears? What are we filling our heads with, our mind with? This is all important because all of that, it sort of germinates in our hearts. And then whatever fruit we're producing reveals it. So here's the real question of the day. I want you to think about this. This is the question. What do you want to come out of your mouth? Well, whatever you want to come out of your mouth, then you got to start putting in your heart. Okay? That, that, that's how it works. And that's why we're reading through the New Testament together. This is the reason this is so important. This is... Uh, this, the, the, you know, the Bible is really God's information on himself. This is where you get information about God. This is God's Facebook page to you. This is his Instagram, you know. Uh, if you want information uh, and how you establish a relationship, and all your relationships, most of you probably, you probably stalked those people before you ever introduced yourself to them or something like that, you know. Well, this is how you can find, you can, you can stalk Jesus right here. <laughs> and he gives us all this information. So I thought, man, the best thing we can do is we, we got to get, God's word input into our heart. And that's why we're doing this reason, this daily Bible reading that you input his word into your life every day is so encouraging to your Christian faith. It is so encouraging to our church. And I know some of you are saying, well, I didn't do that. It's already too late. No, we can still give you that Bible reading every day. Just pick up where we are. Uh, just let us know, sign up for it, go to our website, and man, we'll send you a Bible reading every single day. Just takes a few minutes, and you start your whole day outright. It's not just about knowing all the content of the Bible, although that's helpful, but really what it's doing when we put ourselves into God's Word is it's giving God an opportunity to actually speak into your life, to reveal himself into your life. Have you ever thought about this? The creator of the universe wants to have a personal relationship with you, and the way you understand that relationship is you get into God's word. It's the question of being discipled and being encouraged as we read and study the word of God. 
And I'm afraid in the day and age in which we live that many of us are being discipled by social media much more than we are God's Word. Uh, many of you are so stuck on Fox News or CNN, that's really who you're giving hours of your input to and only a few minutes to the Word of God. So who's really discipling you? You know, this is, again, where Jesus sort of gets up in your business a little bit. Some of us are being discipled more by our coffee conversations, our music that we listen to, or the entertainment we give ourselves to, than we are God's Word. It's not that any of those things are bad in and of themselves, but then something that comes out of your mouth and you're like, I don't know where that came from. Yeah, where in the world did that come from? It's been in your heart for a while. <laughs> it really has. Which is why Proverbs says this, above all else, guard your heart. Guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. It's so important to guard your heart. And what we take in and what we think about in our mindset, those are seeds. Basically, they're like seeds according to Jesus. And eventually, our inputs, these seeds, are going to produce fruit. So in an unguarded moment, when maybe words surface that are crass and cutting and crushing, and we think to ourselves, I am not sure where in the world that came from. That is not me. And you know what? The Spirit of God, His Holy Spirit, very gently, very lovingly, but extremely directly comes to us and says, I know where it came from. <laughs> it's been in your heart for a while. It's been down there for a while. So guard your heart by being proactive. I love a, another scripture uh, all the way back in Psalm 119, verse 11. This is what the psalmist says. Longest chapter in the Bible. This is what he says. I have hidden your word in my heart. Why? So that I will not sin against you. When we put God's word in our heart, it helps us to stay on track of where he wants us to be. Uh, it, you know, it seems so simple, but it is a challenge. It's a challenge. And the reason I know it's so challenging is because so many of you Highlanders, over a thousand of you, you really had good intentions to go all the way through the New Testament in 90 days. But that number quickly begins to fade because the enemy hates for you to put in God's Word. And all of a sudden, he starts telling you, you don't have time to do that. You got to get to work. Hey, you don't have time to give yourself to a couple of chapters today. You just don't have time. It would be good, but you just don't have time. He gives all kinds of excuses, and then all of a sudden we're off on our day, and stuff starts coming out of our mouth, and we're like, where in the world did that come from? Come from our heart? You want to change that? Then you have to input God's Word, because our heart controls our tongue. Now, think with me as we wrap this up. Maybe for you... The words that have actually caused hurt and pain in your life are the words that you've longed to hear from somebody, but they never came. Maybe you wanted your dad to tell you, hey, I'm proud of you. Man, I love you. I am for you. But for some reason, your dad could never bring himself to say those words to you, and it hurt. Maybe some of you, you just wanted to hear your mother say, Hey, sweetheart, I love you. No matter what, mom's with you. You're beautiful. You are precious. You're a treasure. But, you know, mom was never quite able to say those words to you. Probably because her mom was never able to say those words to her. And maybe right now you're in a relationship, possibly married, or maybe you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and the words that are often spoken to you are so careless and hurtful and cutting and degrading, and it hurts. Maybe you just long to hear somebody, anybody, maybe a coach, a teacher, an authority figure of some kind say, hey, I want you to know I'm with you. I'm cheering you on. Hey, I believe in you. You got what it takes. 
But right now, for some strange reason, nobody is in your corner saying those words that in your life you desperately need. You know, the opposite is true as well. Especially at the beginning of this year where everybody is just emotionally exhausted and spiritually beat down, worn out, and weary. I think we need more than ever before to be speaking words into each other that are encouraging and helpful. Because here's the truth, guys. We serve a God who still rules regardless of this crazy pandemic. Our God is still on the throne. He is still sovereign. And right now, maybe you just need to resubmit your heart to him. Because with all the negativity in the world and all the inputs over these last couple of years, somehow, even as a child of God, you have allowed your heart to become callous and you say, well, how do I know that? Because what seeds and words you're producing are nothing like you want them to be, you know? <laughs> They're not encouraging. You've gotten negative, and you've gotten hopeless. We need to pay attention to what we say. So uh, let me close with uh, three little questions. you probably heard this. But before you say things in your life, just run it through these three questions. Here they are, all right? First thing is, is it true? That's a good one in our culture, isn't it? Before you say anything, just check, is that true? And if it's not true, it doesn't need to be said. Uh, and can we agree with that? If it's not true, why in the world would we say it, especially as children of God? First question, is it true? The second question is, is it helpful? You know, if I say this, is it helpful? Is it going to be helpful to somebody else? If it's not helpful... Again, why would I say it? And then the third question that we really need to consider is if I say this, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it kind? Is it kind? And when we answer all three of those with yes, then hey, for the sake of Almighty God, start saying those things to other people. Our world is desperately in need of encouraging communication. <laughs> Be a lifter of people. You know, speak positive into their life. Believe in people. Because we want that so bad in our own life. You know, I think for all of us, we just need to slow up a little and be more thoughtful about the words that are coming out of our mouth. Here's the truth, guys. We don't have to agree on everything. We don't, in order to be brothers and sisters. We really can be unified uh, together, and we can really be civil and truly care about others and not see everything the same way. It's very cap we're very capable of doing that. We can be great examples in our society today as a church that we may view things differently, but man, we love each other. We're going to look out for each other. We're going to believe in each other. In fact, Jesus says it's one of the marks of somebody who's fully given him their heart. When our communication is truthful, helpful, and kind. So can I just say as somebody who's still in process, I sure don't have this down, you know, right? I'm, I'm still right there with you. I don't get it right all the time. I'm in this battle with you. <laughs> can we just today resubmit? our hearts to Jesus so that he can help us produce the kind of fruit in our lives that we'd be proud of so that when we're speaking out to other people we're saying things that are true we're saying things that are helpful we're saying things that are kind man that's the kind of church I want to be a part of would you pray with me right now at all of our locations hey just pray with me Jesus thank you so much that you're just an amazing God. That here on this Valentine's Day weekend, I understand, Lord, uh, probably folks want to come and hear a message about relationships and all those kind of things. But honestly, what we've looked at today is the greatest relationship, our hearts, to you. And if we've allowed the culture in which we live to cause our hearts to be calloused, we easily know that today because of the words that we are saying on a constant basis. So Lord, just help us run through that filter. And if our hearts have gotten callous, God, we just resubmit our heart to you today. We ask you, God, to fill 
our hearts with your love, your compassion, your forgiveness. God, we're so thankful that you're the one who st stood by us and said, you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. No matter how bad we've messed up our life, the words that we may have never heard from our mom or our dad or some other figure that we wanted to hear so bad, you say you believe in us <laughs> and you love us and you value us so much that you gave your life on a cross so that we could be forgiven and the promise and have the promise of eternity with you. That's amazing. I'm convinced that if we really understood your love for us, that God, we would want to surrender and spend time with you more and more every day. So God, I just pray right now, you're changing hearts. You're helping us to review how we've been speaking lately, what's been coming out of our mouth. And, and just remind us, God, that what has come out of our mouth has been marinating in our hearts for some time. And so some of us need to have some heart surgery today. <laughs> and God, just, just help us. I wonder if there is one here like last weekend. We had so many give their life to Jesus and you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. You've never asked him to forgive you of your sins and come into your heart and life. Hey, would you just simply ask Jesus Christ to do that for you today? Just say, Jesus, I've made mistakes. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to save me from my sin. I submit my life to you. I surrender to you today. And hey, if you prayed that right now online, would you just click that little raised hand button so we can rejoice with you? And on TV, if you're watching by TV, let us know. Send me an email. And uh, we are so grateful for what God's doing in your life. Lord, we love you today. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, guys, thanks so much for being with us today. I look forward to being with you guys in Bluefield next weekend. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a great time together and uh, invite some friends, and it's going to be awesome. Pray for Pastor Steve. I know he'll knock it out of the park. Love you guys. You know, we talk all the time about how easy it is to give online. And today we want to show you in real time how quickly you can give online. Tim, what's the benefit of giving online? Well, you know, I pay my bills. I set it up automatically because sure. it's important, right? That's well, right. Giving to God is just as important. So automate what's important, right? That's and right. so we want to show you real quick how you can do this. So you just go to the hub, scroll down to give. Okay. Click the give now button. Enter in how much you want to give. hundred bucks, let's say. Monthly, yeah. choose which campus you want to give to. I mean, HF Online, hey. Sure, or whatever uh, campus you got to. <laughs> General ties, difference maker, whichever you want you give to. Hit give monthly, choose when you want to start. And the best way to give is through your bank account. Um, but the fastest way is through Apple Pay. So you can just click Apple Pay, choose which account you want to give from, and double click. And the tap. And there we go, I just gave. And so yeah. it's that fast and easy. Yeah, hey, we would love for you to consider setting up a reoccurring gift. It's again, the easiest way to do it. And it's really great to automate what matters to you because in the moment you wanna do something and then a hundred other things come by. <laughs> this is a great way for you to, to really decide on the front end what you want to do and what matters to you. Yep. So maybe you consider giving today and setting up that reoccurring gift. We are always grateful for all of you who participate with us in generosity. And we're glad that we can use technology to continue to reach people as we join God to make a difference in our communities and our world.